Twins, Tigers rained out in the series opener, but they'll be back on Friday. It's going to be a fun one. It should be Tariq Skubal and Pablo Lopez. That's correct. Pablo Day pushed back a day. We're going to talk about the Tigers series, and we're going to go around the minor league affiliates as well. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins. It's your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W. A-R-N-E, and joining me and someone you should follow. Again, we're on the road to 1K, which is about as far as I can run without getting real tired, is Mr. Dave Brown at Answer Dave Brown on the tweets, on the Zeets, on the X. What's up, man? Yeah, I'm checking my followers list now, and uh, I want to say it's like 912. So, that, I mean, that's that's probably good enough. That's good enough. That's 912 good. sounds about what time? 914. <laughs> Sounds about like the time you and I start getting ready to record our show. Um, yeah, and wishing sometimes that we'd fall asleep. <laughs> we were going to do it early today, but the stupid Tigers got rained out. Yeah, I, it turns out that some of those guys ended up going to the Pistons game tonight, which sounds like even worse than a rain out. But there was Mark Canna and Jack Flaherty and Carson Kelly all got jerseys and were sitting courtside. And I hope they weren't <laughs> fanatics. Yeah, right. No, I saw you comment that, which is is a good point. Um, Thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, also on YouTube. And, of course, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, which is your team every day. I encourage you to be active in the comments. I encourage you to click the thumbs up, click the subscribe. Give us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform that you're listening on if it takes your views. We'd love to hear from you, though. What can we do better? What can we do less of? Be nice about it, but we'd love to hear from you. Today's episode... Brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Mr. Dave Brown, you can probably hear from my voice that I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm not sure. I was sure. going to ask you about that. Do you have other cold symptoms? Uh, the little man had strep, and so he stayed home with me on Monday. And I'm not sure if I'm getting, so here's the deal. I get it from both directions. I've got a daughter in first grade and a kid at daycare and a wife who goes and works in a salon. And so they are all around people all day long. Meanwhile, I am like in my compound boarded up. Only person I talk to all day is Mr. Dave Brown. And so these things hit me like a truck. And so that's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm feeling. Well, it's not good to be run over by a truck. So I I don't, I have it similar just because I have two kids like you, similar ages, and they interact with children at school and they come home all filthy. It's disgusting. Yeah. Germ and then, farms. And then I suffer. So so twins playing four against the Tigers. There seems to be some confusion about the games themselves because Rasa Resource has a Thursday game listed, Pablo Lopez and Tariq Skubal, a Friday game listed as Pablo Tur- Lopez and Tariq Skubal, which to me seems like a bit too much. They're going to be overworked if that's true. Yeah, this isn't the days of old Haas, Radborn, and, and that sort of thing. Then it says off on Saturday, which couldn't be further from true because they're playing two games on Saturday. And then Sunday is the finale. But what I'm looking at here is a Tigers team off to a good start. Uh, the lopez Skubal matchup is going to be the one to kind of watch. ESPN has... Kenta and Joe Ryan on Saturday. So I would assume that would mean the second Saturday game is probably going to be a battle of 27th men. We'll talk about that in a minute here as far as what that means. Because for the Twins, it's pretty obvious. They have one other pitcher on the 40 who is both healthy and available. He started on Sunday. We'll talk about him. But uh, other than that, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how things go. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about, uh, I, I I pulled some stuff from the affiliates too. I think we'll do a feature called the affiliates corner where we'll kind of talk about the minor leaguers a little bit, because especially right now, 
the minor league teams have a bunch of major league guys on them from rehabs. So mm -hmm. uh, Caleb Thielbar pitched tonight for St. Paul and Trevor Larnick had a pretty nice game for Fort Myers. So we'll talk about all that, but I do want to dive into Twins Tigers. Probably talk about that first two segments here. And it's Pablo against Scooble. If if Twins fans are not familiar with Scooble, I I think I can excuse it from the fact that he's been injured enough to where he hasn't been on the mound that much. I mean, he threw 149 and a third innings in 2021 and was so-so. Uh, really took off in 2022, 117.2 innings, and then 80 and a third last year. So in, in a way, it's like he hasn't really had that breakthrough great season because when he was pitching 149 and a third innings in 2021, he gave up more than two homers per nine um, and had a, an X ERA of 558. So it, it's a balance between he hasn't been healthy and good at the same time. But I think Twins fans should be prepared first and foremost for the versus lefties lineup, which we discussed in our most recent episode. But for Scooble to kind of be maybe like to the left-handed version of Tyler Glass now, would that be fair? That's some pretty high praise. I was thinking more like, I mean, he's got more experience than Cole Reagans, but he sort of broke through last year in like half a season like Reagans did with the Royals, and they're both left-handed and get a lot of strikeouts, and uh, I don't know if the profile is similar, but just a, a guy kind of coming into his own at age 26. And, um, yeah, I think Twins fans are somewhat – they're probably – at least the people that follow us are somewhat yeah. cognizant of Tariq Skubal. He's – uh Although the, the twins themselves, the guys who are on the roster now don't have a, a lot of a big background against him, like Ryan Jeffers, 12 plate appearances, Carlos Santana at various ports of call, 11, Carlos Correa, eight, Buxton, six. So they don't have they don't have no experience against Scooble, but they don't have a lot either. So uh, he just must have missed the twins over those, you know, these past few years. But he's yeah. he's very talented for sure. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I just felt as though, yeah, the Twins have missed him for some reason or another more often than not. The thing to like about him, there's a lot of them. Uh, his fastball average is 96-2. It's touched 99-5. Sinker is touched 98-9, although he doesn't throw it that often. Uh, he's a four-seam changeup slider sinker guy, and he can use all of them uh, kind of at his own discretion. He, he's got all that... Uh, it, it, he doesn't have like show me pitches. It's all very, very distinct, important parts of his repertoire. Um, fastball, like most pitchers, has gotten hit a little harder than others in his repertoire. But the slider is really a pitch you got to look out for. Uh, swinging strike rate of 11.9% for his career, but 11.1% uh, last year. This year, 19.4%. Uh, it looks as though the changeup is maybe um, superseded the slider as his preferred secondary. Twenty-seven point six percent strike or swinging strike rate, twenty-eight point three percent last year. Uh, the changeup and the slider are going to be pretty hard to contend with, but uh, if you can eliminate them, you can sit on his fastball, which has given up numbers. But the issue here is he doesn't walk anybody. Mm -hmm. One point four six walks per nine this year, and twelve and a third. One point five seven and eighty and a third. He has walked fewer than three batters per nine in every season of his career since 2020, his rookie campaign. So I think what makes him difficult is he kind of does what I call, and it's probably sacrilegious, is the holy trinity of pitchers. Strikeouts, yes. Walks, no. Grounders, yes. He does all three of those things when he's going right. And uh, that makes a, a, that a nasty pitcher makes. And he's he's got a... Uh a big ballpark to work with. So when there are mistakes, uh, he's not going to get burned by them. And so far now granted defensive metrics are like the last thing that we should pay too much attention to, especially two weeks into a season, but the tigers, according to some have the best defense in the league. So they've played well so far on defense. And uh, you know, you mentioned grounders and so forth and uh, Tariq being a lefty that uh, of course the twins fans love that to hear that because that means that the right-handed lineup 
uh, not really their favorite thing in the world. So I, I, you know, I would expect runs to be pretty stingy. Honestly, I mean, it was the White Sox, but when he pitched on opening day, I thought, well, there's a good chance he's going to uh, Bob Feller these guys. Bob Feller's the last guy to throw a no hitter on opening day. I thought maybe he was going to do that or be perfect, and he wasn't quite perfect. I think he gave up a run. So, uh, and it's not quite the same thing as uh, other teams, but you know, Pablo Day, he's going to he's had a great he's had a great record in in three starts. I think against I think it's three against the Tigers. I think he's only given up three runs so uh, in his career. So uh, he's got. Uh, uh, good, good numbers. And I think uh, there's been one or two guys, maybe down when he was on Miami who hit him a little bit, but um, he, he's been good against most of those guys in the Tigers lineup. So I'm expecting a, a three to two kind of game tomorrow. Yeah, actually that was the score I was going to say as well. Let's take a quick second and uh, talk to our friends about our friends at Ibotta. And then when we come back, I have some uh, harebrained theories for how Friday will go in terms of how I think one team or the other can win. We'll talk about the rest of the pitching matchups. And before we get out of here, we'll uh, take a trip around the affiliates. But like I said, first, a word from Ibotta. And spring has sprung, which means spring cleaning, at least in my house, and I assume yours too, Dave Brown. Whether that Yard means- for sure. Yeah, the yard, that's another big one. Uh, Whether that means they'll stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for spring clothes, make sure you're using Ibotta to get real cash back with every purchase. And one thing I recommend, run to your local place and get salt, ice, ice melting salt at this time of year. They have so much of it. It's on a good deal. You'll thank yourself in December and January and February. But I am uh, getting ahead of myself. Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns about 250 bucks a year. It's actually 256 is the exact number. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, a flight that you've been eyeing, or a fancy dinner you've been craving, or a night out at the ballpark with your family. There's a lot of options here. My app I went and got gas in my truck today and grabbed a bite and some wood to burn in my solo stove. And I bought us like, hey, we see you're at Holiday, you know, the local gas station here. And it's it's constantly saying, hey, we can help you save money. We can help you get money back on this. It's a wonderful app. I highly recommend it. Other apps will give you points. You don't get much back from points. This is cash. You add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash. You cash out to your bank account. PayPal or gift cards. There's 50 million plus users. So join them every time you shop from over 2,700 brands, including all your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering listeners five bucks just for trying Ibotta using the code Locked On MLB when you register. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code locked on MLB. That's I B O T T A in the Google play or app store and use code locked on MLB. All right, Dave, the one thing I was thinking about here for uh, the game on Friday is that someone's going to make a mistake. It's going to be an otherwise close game, like two, two late. And when the twins, for instance, went ahead of the Dodgers and then Correa made that incredible play. Not to say that the send on Otani was a mistake, but it was a definitive, important game changing play that largely decided who would win. I feel like it may not, it may not be to that extent. You know, it's not like Riley green is going to throw out Byron Buxton at the plate and that's going to be it. But I do think there will be a moment, an aha moment late in the game where it's going to be like, yeah, these two teams did battle. But uh, there was a moment that one team or the other took the bull by the horns. And again, I'm hopeful it's the Twins. But we've seen in uh, different times last year and this year where they can play a pretty good game. But that moment is where they crumple and and fold up. And uh, that can be extremely frustrating. Well, if Riley Green does throw out Byron Buxton at a base or a home plate tomorrow, that's going to be better than your – That's a, and that happens. That's going to be better than your Manuel Margot – 
goes deep on opening day prediction, even if that had happened. You know what I'm saying? That's good. Yes. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna blame you, basically, is what I'm telling you. That the twins, if if the if that happens to the twins, you're on the list. Um and you know, with the Tigers uh playing good defense. Uh, Javi Baez, you never really know what you're going to get at shortstop, but he is capable of doing something silly, incredible, kind mm-hmm. of like Correa. Uh, he does have a history of smart plays on defense. He doesn't always go to the plate with the best plan in the world, but, uh, you know, he's, I don't know, is there a quicker tagger in the league than Javi Baez? So he's like Carlos Correa. If Carlos Correa let Eddie Rosario hit for him. <laughs> What a, that, that's a great, uh, I like that analogy. So, um, so been they, on that one a while, yes. Uh, so he's he's kind of capable of greatness, and that, that could be where the defensive play comes from tomorrow. We'll see, yeah, we'll see. I feel like we don't have to really hash over or hash out what Lopez should bring to the table just because we've kind of seen it and it's just a matter of executing it. So um, assuming Joe Ryan and Kent Maeda line up, because sometimes they can get tricky. The Twins had the Marlins in town one time, and Mike Redmond got tricky and and flipped the day the the game of the doubleheader he was starting. I think it was Jose Fernandez at the time. Uh, uh-huh. Second straight show that we've brought up a, a baseball player who left us too soon. By the way, did I tell you that somebody messaged me and said that? From our show, they found out that Jeremy Giambi had passed away. And I was like, wow, not quite we landed on the moon here, but it's been a couple years, so I was surprised. But nevertheless. Well, uh, he, th- sometimes that stuff just sort of get gets missed. And even he, maybe you, you heard it at one time, but you yeah. kind of forgot it too. I think that's I think that, that happens a lot with baseball fans. That you, they hear about something happening where a player passes of you know, yeah. that notoriety and uh, it just maybe it gets – lost but uh hey you know whatever you know we can do to help the memorial along here yeah so uh, they they flip-flopped jose fernandez and somebody else and it felt like actually i think it was more front office meddling than anything Uh uh, which what a horrible deal for mike redmond's first managerial gig to be with that team but we don't have to talk about that uh so assuming kenta and joe ryan face each other that probably means a showdown of 27th men Simeon Woods Richardson is the only healthy pitcher on the Twins 40 man roster who's not in the major leagues because Brent Hedrick has a forearm. In fact, if you look on RotoWire, I'm the one who broke that news. So that's pretty cool. Did you uh, know? Yeah. You're in I the mean, middle I, of everything, aren't you, Brandon? I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know who they're going to bring up because when I look at their kind of like depth chart, Matt Manning makes sense. I don't know when he pitched last. I think you could do a bullpen game and you bring up another bullpen arm like Bo Brisky, who I think was actually pretty solid this spring. Um, there has Have been you had the Brisky in Detroit. It's uh, I know it's not known for it, but it's, it's not bad. No, no. And I, uh, I say that for my Kansas city trips because mm-hmm. I'm smart like that. I, so, I've heard, heard or seen or read a couple of places that it, it, it will be Manning. That doesn't mean it will be Manning, but yeah. that's what the people who are kind of like us for the Tigers expect it for Matt Manning to come up. So yeah, it'll be between cutting spring training, Manning. but they have some depth, you know, uh, on that pitching staff and Manning didn't make it. And he was kind of maybe on the verge last year of not a scuba breakthrough, but being better than, you know, living up to some yep. expectations at one time. And not a bad deal when a guy you took ninth overall is your option to come up. Yeah. You know, that- and I mean, Simeon Woods Richardson, you know, pretty highly regarded prospect. He did get hit around a little bit last time out, and his big league numbers are not pristine. That but would again, actually be a very interesting, you know, even a standalone matchup for me. Yep. Woods Richardson versus uh, Manning, uh, you know, based on, uh, you know, I don't know if Woods Richardson is post hype, but he's, you know, close. Close. He's getting there. My, uh, he's, uh, I would say Mize is like the post hype, mm-hmm. and then Simeon Woods Richardson is like I can imagine him being on that road, right? But not quite there yet. Uh, wasn't uh, did, did Maeda pitch well against them in spring training in a game? Uh, having him, was it well, or did I imagine it, or 
it's spring yeah, training. Is there a Mandela effect going on? Uh, you know, you remember retroactively that the Twins have not hit now. They didn't hit in the spring. And does Maeda fit into that? It seems to me like he does. And he has been, to call him iffy would probably be pretty fair. Uh, I saw him get knocked around last time out. Was he facing the White Sox, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, God, I hope not. Well, and so he he hasn't looked great, and I think the issue with him, uh, two starts, giving up an earned run in every or nine nine earned runs, nine innings, uh, <laughs> negative in the WAR, so that's certainly not good. Um, I'm trying to think who knocked him around. Uh, yeah, Chicago knocked him around in the first start for six earned and three and a third, and then he settled down a bit in a loss to Oakland. Uh, Three earned, three strikeouts, four walks, and five and two thirds. They struggle with the athletics. The Tigers did. People Why were ready I, to. Uh, I don't know. They, they were ready to hand them something, and the 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 A's beat them a couple times. So slow your roll on the Tigers. But I mean, people Kent getting knocked around by those two teams. Yeah, the White Sox don't. They don't score against anybody. So thirteen swinging strikes and one hundred fifty eight pitches. So he's not missing bats. He's not getting grounders, which was never really his thing. I don't know. I mean, I feel like what's going to happen is the Twins are going to blow up for eight runs, or there's going to be just an insane, like, hot take apocalypse if he shuts the Twins down because it'll be, we didn't need him, which is a common, oh, yeah. we didn't need him. Then there'll be, of course, the Twins offense does this, and then any other amount of self-loathing you can imagine. But I'm hopeful that it's a uh, you know a a, a, two, a two sided coin where they hit him hard and then fans will stop saying, "Well, they should have signed him." Right. Um, <laughs> is uh, Varland supposed to go in the fourth game? Well, that's just it. Um, it's Ober and Flaherty based on oh, Ober and Flaherty going online, but there still seems to be some disc combobulation is that the right word well maybe they're being coy you know on purpose and so we're confused because yeah they're not being and again. ober on sunday on roster yeah. resource and espn says that too so varlander would probably start the next series opener which uh if i'm not mistaken i should know it off the top of my head. i'm really bad about knowing where a team goes next it just it does not trigger to me uh they're they in don't go anywhere maybe they just hang around they're in Baltimore, so they'll see the newly promoted Jackson Holiday. Well, at least it'd be hard to give up a home run to left field in Baltimore. Yeah. Hey, let's take a quick second. We'll come back, talk about Joe Ryan, some Bailey Ober talk, and then the affiliates. Uh, one game was going to extras. We'll see if that one's finished. Emmanuel Rodriguez homeward in the ninth inning to send a game to extras. Boy, he's going to be more and more interesting if the Twins' offense continues to sputter. But again, let's uh, let's give some love to FanDuel, and uh, we'll be right back. Oh boy, uh, <laughs> FanDuel is your number one America's America's number one sports book. Easy for me to say. Uh, the sports calendar is loaded right now. FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because of that. And right now, new customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets after getting any winning $5 bet. So again, if your first $5 plus bet wins, you get 200 bucks. That's basically just free to play however you see fit. You want to play it all at once. You want to play it a little bit at a time. Whatever your risk threshold is, it's up to you. That's 200 bucks, though, that you can bet on MLB, NBA, NHL, whatever you can find, they'd be happy to have you. And so you can visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And LinkedIn wants to know if you are struggling to close deals, B2B selling is here and tougher than ever. And it's why we want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. The Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers driving higher revenue and increasing your sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, 
Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with people who matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a free 60-day trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on. You get a 60-day free trial. It's more or less two months. It's a one-sixth of the year. Uh, we don't have to simplify the fraction any more than that, and that's about all the more I can because uh, math is not my strong suit. But let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on to get started. All right, Dave Brown, we're coming down the home stretch here, and we have quite a bit of ground to cover. Um, yeah, Joe Ryan, uh, there was a good feature on him in The Athletic. Dan Hayes did a nice job showing how he's trying to throw his secondaries with more conviction, more velocity. And I think early on... Uh, I've liked what I've seen so far. For sure. I but I kind of like how Joe Ryan pitches anyway. I'm not right. I don't need to be persuaded anymore on that. The only thing we need to see from him, I think, is a full season of health. And uh, you know, he he's continued to uh tweak a, himself a little bit, and I mean that in a good way as far yeah, as you not, know, not the groin tweaking. No, and not the twerking either mm -hmm. with his yeah. butt. <laughs> But uh, maybe he does that, but it's not not in front of us where we can see. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's, uh, you know, he, he goes to the drive line. He gets, uh, you know, a full menu of things to do to work on, and he comes back a little bit better. So uh, I'm always surprised if Joe Ryan has a bad game. I typically am. Some people are uh, negative with him, but I'm not one of those people. So I'm excited to see uh, what he's going to do in this next in the second game of the series. But um, I was thinking about two, one more thing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to guess who, who's the lefty that we're going to We're going to see probably one lefty out of uh, Kirilov, Julian and Walner. I would imagine. I think, I think Kirilov will be in the lineup in school in the, in the yes, but not Walner and not Julian. Uh, even though Julian has started to have a little success against lefties. What do you think of that? No, I think I like that as much as Julian had, you know, the Homer off uh, was a Vesia. Yeah. Um, so you, you get a better feel for where his at bats or plate appearances against lefties could be headed. Uh, for, by, by positional need, I still think they're going to try to shoehorn Kyle Farmer in there to get his bat going. And so unless Farmer plays third and Willie Castro sits or Willie Castro goes to the outfield and plays a Walner, I don't know. I, I don't think that happens. I think you got to get Margot out there. And so uh, I think you're probably on to something here. I think it's it goes Kirilov 1. Julian, maybe not quite a 1B to Kirilov's 1A. But uh, Walner is definitely a distant third place. They still got, They do have to get Walner going. It's just going to have to be on Friday. Hey, I uh, I saw someone who cut or Matt Walner. Excuse me. I saw someone who cut Matt Walner from their fantasy baseball team, and I'm looking mm. at him right now. Mm. Look, it's a deep lineup, and uh, I, I needed the space. And, uh, you know, he's, hey, he's on waivers for you. It's not that I don't believe, but it's fantasy baseball. He's a part time player. So, there not you personal, go. just business. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what to make of Jack Flaherty, by the way. So, dominates the White Sox because who doesn't? And then gets smoked six earned in six innings, nine hits, not nice against the A's. Uh, definitely an enigma at this point. Yeah, he's definitely Edward Enigma. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I've been – I was all for him before, and then he developed a bum shoulder, and those things scare me as far as before. You know, the, the elbow scares me because you think the guy's going to go on the DL and have go see Neil Elatrache or the Keepmeister. The Keepmeister. Um, but shoulders, to me – uh, th those just linger and you, you kind of pitch through them and then, then you're not very good when you do. And, you know, you sort of keep going and, and hope that it, it stops barking at you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, how, how's the shoulder going to be feeling on when, when he goes, that's, that's, the, that's the big thing. I think that's a guy that the, the twins should be able to, you know, if the offense is going to awaken, uh, he seems like a good guy to, to pummel. Yeah. And I think Kenta is too. So, mm -hmm. You know, if, if they don't take two or three, I could 
see some I could foresee some grumbling. We'll see what happens there. Uh quick trip around the affiliates. St. Paul wins 6-2 over Iowa. Homers from Diego Castillo, not that Diego Castillo, but the other Diego Castillo. And Deshaun Kiersey Jr., uh, David Festa goes two and two thirds, kind of uneven. But Jordan Balazovic was solid behind him in relief. Um, what else happened here? Caleb Fieldbar gets the win, two innings of relief, gave up a homer, but four strikeouts. And the Cubs have some pretty interesting prospects in Pete Crow, Armstrong, and uh, Patrick Wisdom. Not really a prospect, but a guy to watch. Matt Mervis. And then I don't know. Have you heard of this this prospect they've got playing in the outfield? Uh, David oh. Peralta. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, cool. yeah. They signed him in spring training, and people were worried that he was going to play. Um, but with the Cubs and you know, every fan base, man. Right. Now, they, you know, they, they've got a couple other guys. Owen Casey down there in the minor leagues. They like him. And uh, is he in Iowa? I think he is. But um, so that's who I thought you were going to mention. I didn't. You threw me a curveball with there with Peralta. Casey at the bat. Yeah. Um, Not spelled the same, but no. pronounced that way. Wichita does fall 7-6 in 10 innings, but Emmanuel Rodriguez has been leading off for them. 1431 OPS, which again, did, early season. Did you see who I picked up? I We're talking about dropping Matt Walner, but who picked up? Emmanuel yeah, well, who, Rodriguez. who started the actual auction on him? Well, who doesn't have enough money to go beyond a dollar? Who doesn't have enough players? Yeah, that we're kind of going back and forth there. But yeah, hey, I, I like the trade. You know, yep. Bailey Maybe Ober's waiting. Yep, trade trade him and Ober to me for something. We'll see. Uh, Fort Myers crushed 10 5 by Clearwater. Larnick, two for three with a double, two RBIs. Um, would you bring him up over Walner at this point when he gets healthy? Uh, soon, not yet. Uh, yeah. We give it, we give yeah. Matt another week. Yep. Uh, Cedar Rapids wins 8-4. Luke Keisha with his first homer of the year. And keep an eye on this one. Keone Cavaco playing first base, one for three. He's hitting 300 with an 864 OPS. May That's, not be it's a, lot. a completely cooked draft pick yet. Well, hey, thanks for hanging out. This has been Locked On 